So that was the geometric distribution motivated through that example of continually rolling until some success happens. This next distribution, the binomial distribution, this we take a different problem. Suppose we toss a biased coin, in this case, bias just means that the heads are more likely to occur than the tails. Um, we toss a bias coin n times. We just want to know how many heads appear. So in this case, we've got a fixed sequence that we're doing, a fixed number of experiments we're doing. We're doing n experiments, and we're flipping the coin n times, and we're just recording. And we want to know, under that fixed sequence, how many successes have occurred. And we're considering a head to be a success. Whereas in the geometric distribution, we were just rolling the die until a success happened. We had no idea how long we had to roll until a success happened. That's why we had to consider infinitely long sequences, because a success could happen after a million rolls, after two billion rolls, after a quadrillion rolls. We don't know how many rolls it would take to produce a six. So we needed to consider all infinitely many long sequences in our sample space. But here, we've got a fixed number of tosses we're doing. It's n tosses, and we want to know how many of those tosses are going to be successes. That's what we're interested in finding out. So we'll start with our sample space. Our sample space is going to be you know, toss 1, toss 2, all the way up to toss n. We just record head or tails, or each of these tosses is a head or a tails. You know, some of these things you may already be familiar with from stats class. You may be familiar with the term Bernoulli trial and successes. I haven't put that terminology in here, but the idea is we are doing this coin toss. On each toss of the coin, there are two options, success or not a success. What we are determining to be a success in this case is getting a heads. In the last example, the geometric distribution, we are rolling a die. On each roll of the die, we either have a success, a six appears, or no success, a six doesn't appear. So they're very much sort of in the same nature, and these are more generally known as Bernoulli trials. And if you're interested and you want to, or you've taken stats, uh, you can go ahead and look up our newly trial. It's the terminology surrounding this, but I'm not going to introduce that terminology here. We are just going to focus on the coin tossing and the idea that getting a heads is our success. So maybe I'll just note that what's here is a heads. We're going to consider that a success. And this is the probability of a success. So with that bit of terminology in mind, that might help to see how this can be, these ideas can be used in other situations because we just have to identify what we want to be a success. Six appearing, heads appearing, whatever the experiment is I'm doing, I have to decide what a success is. All right, so how big is our sample space? Our sample space is, there's two choices for each coin flip and we do it n times. So size of our sample space is two to the n. What are we interested in? We want to know the expected number of heads. And in particular, to get that, we need to know the probability of a certain number of heads appearing. So that's that first statement. What is the probability that the number of heads is? We want to know about k, but we'll start with 0. What's the probability that the number of heads is 0? And then we'll also work out what is the probability that the number of heads is 1? and so on, down to the probability that the number of heads is k. That's ultimately what we're interested in. So we want to know what the probability of getting zero heads is. To get zero heads means we need to get all tails. So we'll think about it at one flip at a time, because the flips are independent of each other. The, val the value that comes out on a flip is independent of what happened on previous flips, and it makes no influence on what's going to happen on successive flips. So getting zero heads means that the first flip you got a tail. The probability of getting a tail on the first flip was q. So we've got q for the first flip. The probability of getting tails on the second flip is q again. Third flip, q again. And so we are multiplying q for each of the flips. 
there are going to be n of those. And so the value is q to the n. How do we get one head? Well, you can think about it. What it what's the probability of getting a head in the first spot and then tails for the rest? Well, to get a head in the first spot means we've got probability p that a head will occur. So it's p times tails for the remaining ones. So that would be p times q to the n minus 1. That's just the probability that a head occurs in the first spot. But we also get this for the probability that a head occurs in a second spot. And we also get it for the probability that a head occurs in a third spot. So we'd have to add these together for all the different places the heads can occur. Of the n spots, there is n choose 1 places for the head to occur. And so the probability that one head occurs is the number of spots it could possibly occur in times the probability that it occurs in that spot. And so that's n choose 1 times p times q to the n minus 1. And so now we can generalize this result. The probability that k heads appear is we figure out how many possibilities there are for the locations of those k heads. That's n choose k. Once a location is chosen, then we need the heads to appear in each of the k spots. So a head will occur in each spot with probability p, so that's p to the k, times the tails have to occur in the remaining n minus k spots. And so there's our probability that k heads will appear. Now we can go ahead and work out the expected value. The expected value for h is the sum over k times the probability that h is equal to k as k ranges over the values from 0 to n. And so that is the sum of k going from 0 to n of k times n choose k p to the k q to the n minus k. And that almost looks like the sum we get from the binomial theorem. The only problem is that extra k we have in front. So there's that extra k sitting out front. So here, much like in the geometric distribution, we now have a sum. We have to figure out what this sum is equal to. So what is this sum equal to? Well, let's just do a little bit of fiddling around with it. So we're going from k equals 0 to n. k times n choose k, p to the k, q to the n minus k. Because k equals 0 would just wipe out the term, the first term would be just 0, I don't need to start the sum at 0 anymore. I could just start it at 1, because the first term would be 0. Ah, but if I'm starting it at 1, then that means I could factor out a p, because k would be 1 or bigger, and so I'm taking p to the power of k. So really I have a p out front, and then I've got the sum, k equals 1 to n. I have what that binomial coefficient is. It's an n factorial over k factorial n minus k factorial. I also have a k up top. I've got a p to the k minus 1 and a an q to the n minus k. So what can I do now? Well, I can cancel a k in the top and bottom of this expression. So I get an n factorial, cancel the k, that leaves me with a k minus 1 factorial. And I've got an n minus k factorial. And then we got a p to the k minus 1 and a q to the n minus k. And then what I can do is I can pull out an n from the factorial. So I get a p times n and then the sum, I've got an n minus 1 now up top as a factorial. 
I've got a k minus 1 factorial and an n minus k factorial and a p k minus 1 q to the n minus k. And that's k equals 1 to n. So things are looking a little bit better in that this sum now looks almost like a binomial coefficient in front of p to a power q to a power. So I'm looking like I may be able to use the binomial theorem here, but I'll still have to do a little bit of modifications. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that I really need this sum to start at 0, the index to start at 0, so I will change it. I will change the k to an x so it starts at 0 and goes to n minus 1. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to say let k be x plus 1. So I'm just changing the variables. Everywhere I see a k, I'm going to replace it with x plus 1. And because k started at 1, it means x can start at 0. So everywhere I see a k, I'm going to replace it with x plus 1. So there's an x plus 1 minus 1. So there's an x factorial. This becomes an x n minus k, which becomes an n minus x minus 1. I'm going to write it as an n minus 1 minus x factorial. I've got a p to the k minus 1. That just becomes p to the x. And I've got a q to the n minus k. I can write that as n minus 1 minus x. And now I notice that that is precisely the binomial theorem for, for what? Well, it would be p plus q to the power of n minus 1. So that's the binomial theorem right there. So by binomial theorem. And what's p plus q? That's equal to 1. So that's 1 to the power of n minus 1. So that just becomes p times n. And so there, we've actually done the full work because we get that, therefore, the expected value for h, which up above was just the value of that sum, we have now worked out that value of the sum, so that's p times n. And in this particular case, p was 0 0.7, so this means it's 0 0.7 times n. So if you do the coin flip n times, you expect to get heads 70% of those times. So we expect heads to appear 70% of the time. So if I do, if n was 100, then I expect 70, 70 heads to appear. If I did only 10 flips, I'd expect 7 heads to appear. So that's our expectation, is that we expect for this distribution the heads to appear 0 0.07 times n. And I left a little bit too much room perhaps, but we say that a random variable is binomially distributed with parameters p and n when the probability of the random variable equal to k is the binomial coefficient n choose k times p to the k times 1 minus p to the n minus k. And we've just shown that the expected value is np. So whenever we've got an experiment and we've got a random variable that's binomially distributed, so when we work out what the probability of the random variable is for when it is equal to k, and we get an expression that is n choose k times p to the k times 1 minus p to the n minus k, then that's binomially distributed, and therefore the expected value is going to be n times p. So those are our 
two common distributions for random variables, geometric distribution and the binomial distribution. In the next lecture, in lecture 10, we will look at two more examples of uh, some experiments, some sample space and experiment on those sample spaces, which we'll see geometric and binomial distributions come up there and we'll be able to use these results we've just derived. All right, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next lecture.